Hi, welcome to this uh, behind the music look at uh, Black Ink, which is the title track for the alt piano video, the promotional video that we did. So I've had quite a lot of requests uh, to do this one because obviously it's the main track that most people have heard and seen. Uh, and also at the end of the video, there's quite a big claim that, uh, you know, there's no external processing, there's no external sounds on this. This was all made just from like, you know, what's inside the instrument. So I just wanted to take you through like the track, how we how I made it, like how I wrote it, and kind of like, you know, the, the process behind it. So we'll play the track first, it's only 60 seconds. So even if you've heard it before, I'm gonna show you some of the MIDI data on screen to show you what, what's going on there. And then I'll just talk you through how I approached it and then each one of the tracks individually so you can see exactly uh, how I got there. So if we just play the track first, So yeah, that's the track. I guess the, the first thing to say about how it was made up is this video uh, was edited first without any music. So there's no temp track or anything when this came in. Uh, we, it got edited uh, and then we kind of lo looked at it and I broke it down into like the sections. Obviously there's some definite hit points in there that I was like, yes, we've got to hit that that point in the video, but then also like to work in like what the piano is capable of all within 60 seconds was like definitely the, the challenge of the day to be able to figure out uh, how to get all that in, in, the, in the one video. So when this came in, it was exactly 60 seconds, I think. And I just use these markers just to break it up. I found this really helpful, even if you're not writing necessarily pictures to music, is just to be able to block out tracks uh, to begin with, just so you can, it just I don't know, it just keeps your your focus on the on the writing process and just stops you getting carried away with things. But when you're writing to picture, I think it's even more useful because what you can do is put in your hit points, put in exactly like uh, where it needs to, you know, where stuff needs to happen, where stuff needs to progress, and and mine just looked like this. I mean, playing through the the track, it kind of like it landed like just just chance really on 120 beats per minute is when these uh, hit points came in. And there's two main ones really, it's this epic one, which is when this big uh, ink drop happens and it goes from intimate to epic. Uh, then there's this other one, uh, which is the alt piano. And then the other sort of like the main one was like, that I really was like something definitely needs to just happen on this little ink drop as well, was just this when the westwoodinstruments.com uh, logo comes up. And then the other ones I've got are kind of like the intro, main theme, bring that in here. And then when this epic moment happens, I was like, let's, let's just before it, let's bring it down as much as we can. So the epic moment is even more epic. So that's why I just reminded myself that something just needs to, to happen in there. Uh, then there's just the outro, which is like, let's, Let's do something else just at the end, just as a, a little bonus. And then there's this hard end here, which is just like, no, at 60 seconds, this track has got to be out because Instagram uh, videos got to be 60 seconds or less. So that's where my, my hard end was, was like, no, there can't be any music after that. Everything's got to fade down and be at zero uh, by the time we get there. So that those were the, the, the main hit points as I, as I pulled them out. And they just really nicely happened to land on the intimate moment and then the, uh, beg your pardon, the epic moment and then this ink drop moment just happened to land perfectly on the beats. So I lucked out there quite heavily uh, the alt piano was kind of a little bit like feeling it in the in the in the track as I wrote it. So it's made up of 
seven different versions of the piano. So just kind of like a normal basic piano, this main theme, the big epic piano happening here, then the really like, you know, uh, intimate, as real as it gets preset are uh, used for that one on the outro, and then these three separate texture layers. So if I just solo this uh, intro first, just so you can see and hear what's happening. So originally that was just going to be the felted piano and then cut almost like a hard cut to the main theme. And then as I was writing it, I was like, I've got this big felt control. Like I should, re <laughs> I should really make sure that, you know, you can hear that change as it happens because that's one of the whole points of this. So I played the piano chords in loosely to begin with, tidied up a few of my bum notes and, you know, the, the, the notes that didn't quite uh, land uh, as perfectly as they should have done. And then I just programmed in this mod, uh, this mod uh, section here, which is, if you don't know about it, the uh, felted and unfelted samples happen on the mod wheel, so you can fade between these. So if I play this section again, you'll see this felted wheel just suddenly start to change as it, as it changes on the MIDI data here. And then you're into this main theme, which is kind of like just like the same sort of similar chords, uh, but they're, they're much more broken up and arpeggiated. Uh, and what I did with this is add the delay in just to give it a real like heavy sense of movement, just a quarter note uh, delay uh, timings, and then the pan is set to full so it really just swings between uh, the two speakers and then just the right amount of feedback just as I felt it was right for the track, so. I think the only other thing I did with a mix is because I wanted to keep it all, you know, within the contact instrument is I just took some of the low end of the piano out just to allow a bit more room for this grain sound, which was getting a bit overwhelming with the bass notes of there. So, uh, you know, rather than boosting the treble on this, it's sometimes, well, I find it is anyway, it's better to cut frequencies so they carve out room for other things rather than trying to push them through by adding EQ. So the epic moment next, I'll get to the texture layers in a second. The epic piano, let's pull that open, uh, started on none more epic, so it's like the foundation of that preset that you've got built in, uh, but I think I added a, a bit more reverb and again just took away a bit of the low end of the EQ just again to make room for this uh, earth layer that comes in as well. And that is really, the, the chord is, is bigger than I could play. I think it's six notes, but it's it's like the, the, the two big Ds down here and then like more notes up there. So I think I programmed that in. I don't think I played that in, but. So that's that. And then uh, the outro is, I think, this is just the preset out of the box, so as real as it gets. So it really was just like a, a total, you know, antidote to what you've just heard. The track's been building and building and building, uh, and then suddenly you just hear the piano in a totally different light and totally different environment. So that's what I was trying to do there is that you you kind of think it's all over and then this little thing happens at the end, which is just like, oh, this piano can do this as well. So uh, that's what that was kind of designed to be, which is sort of like a reprise of the theme, but then hearing the piano in a different context. So these texture layers next. So this was kind of like uh, using each of those texture layers uh, in a different way, really, just to accent different parts of the uh, parts of the track. So to begin with, these are just like uh, only air, only grain, and then only earth, just as they are. So I'll just play this air one to begin with. And it's just really subtle, just like these like little ghostly notes over the top of the piano just to accent what's going on in the main theme. There's nothing really complicated about this. It's just really simple, 
notes. And then the only grain one, let's just play that on its own. Like this on its own is just like, this is one of my favorite sounds that I've ever made. That's one of my favorite sounds that I've ever, ever made. And like, yes, like I'd be, I'd be happy at that only, but you know, there's all these other sounds as well that you've got to play with. So let's just play this on its own. Sorry, a, that was a total sidestep. Let's get back to the track. And again, there's not really a lot happening with these. It's just mainly just to accent the main theme and to complement each other. But the only grain, uh, like the texture layer was more down like the bottom register of the keyboard and then the only air was at the top so just so they didn't compete too much with each other. And then on this epic moment, this is definitely programmed in, I didn't play this at all, uh, was just like, yeah, all of those three notes, jam the velocities up as, you know, all the way just to go in with this. And just that little note, let me just pull this out of the way so you can see it, that little extra note, just to go over that alt piano title sequence. Uh, I guess with this other section there, epic section, those little two notes there was definitely, like if you've ever watched the show Six Feet Under, uh, I think it's a Thomas Newman uh, soundtrack, or at least he wrote the theme tune anyway, was this like, there's a lot of that going on where it's just like quite dissonant, sort of like angular chords. And that was definitely like a little nod to that. I, I checked it actually, it's not the same chord that he used on that opening title sequence, but that was definitely when I wrote that, I was like, ah, oh, that sounds like six feet under. I better just check that, you know, I'm not just totally ripping it off. Uh, but that's where inspiration comes from, I guess, is that like I wrote it and then was like, where's that from? And then kind of like remembered back to 10, 15 years ago when that show was on, on TV. Uh, and that's what that was all about. Uh, so yeah, that's the, that's the, like the, the track as it's, as it's made. So in terms of processing, if you look at the mix bus, there's absolutely nothing happening. Uh, there's no EQ, there's no reverb, everything's done uh, inside the box. The only thing that you're going to have to forgive me for is this limiter that I've used, and that's because it wasn't mastered outside. We, you know, it got mastered inside the whole uh, Logic session. And that's mainly just to bring up the gain of the overall track, so it's at a volume that's, you know, usable and, and, and is loud enough for YouTube and those kind of things. And then just to set an output ceiling so nothing, you know, accidentally clips and everything is, is captured in there. Just as a note on, on limits for YouTube is that some people will smash this right up to like minus two, uh, uh, minus point two as it comes out of the box. Uh, but in our experience is, is that like, definitely for YouTube, if you're putting anything online, uh, it, it's less so with like iTunes and Spotify and those things, but we just find that when stuff goes on online to YouTube is that sometimes the, the compression that YouTube does sometimes just sneaks audio past what you set it at. So in our experience, uh, we like to just pull that down to half a dB or sometimes if it's a really, really loud track to, to a full minus dB, just so that when it hits YouTube and YouTube like kind of does its thing, that it doesn't accidentally start creeping into actually peaking because that that has happened before. Uh, it's not the end of the world if it does, because sometimes, you know, it's only going to be a tiny fraction, but like to keep it on the safe side, we always just like come down to minus half a dB. That's when you're, you know, mastering stuff specifically for YouTube, for like, you know, iTunes, Apple Music, Spotify, and all those kind of things. Like, you know, talk to your master en mastering engineer and like he'll advise you, she'll advise you about what the, the best thing to do is. So uh, the other thing that we did was, let's pull open this uh, master channel, uh, was just ride the master fader at the end. And again, these were programmed in 
just to kind of like one to pull the track down to uh, to zero. So when it hits that 60 second limit, there's absolutely no music happening at all. So when it hits the edit suite, like, you know, they haven't got to fade it down or anything. It comes in exactly as it should be. And then just to like switch between this intimate moment and this epic moment was just pull this down. So if I zoom in here, the master channel, just to really sell that epic moment when it comes in is like the whole track just dies down just a little bit. I've got it down there to minus 10 uh, dB and then it comes back up again to zero. So it's just to try and really make that epic moment, you know, feel more epic than it was because what, what lied previously was much more quieter and gentle. So uh, that's what happened there. I don't think there's anything else uh, I need to show you. That's kind of like, you know, the, the seven different versions of the piano uh, as they were made up. And then, you know, the fact that each one of these pianos was kind of mixed with inside the instrument itself. There's no EQ or anything happening on the outside. I mean, if there is, if there's something that I've forgotten or, you know, anything like that, obviously just drop a comment uh, below and, and I'll answer it or an email or anything like that. And we'll respond and, you know, actually get, get you the answer that you need. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Like we had quite a lot of requests, as I say, to, to kind of go through that and just to, you know, show that that is all the piano and that's exactly what the piano is capable of. Uh, but if there is anything more that you want to see, like there's other demo tracks obviously on our SoundCloud page and our YouTube channels that you might just want to go, oh, how do they do that? Like, we're happy to do this kind of stuff to show you what these instruments are capable of. So that is it. I think that's it. If there's anything more, drop it in the comments, drop me an email. Uh, but apart from that, hope you're all well and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Take care. Uh, that's it. That is it. Is it? Is that it? Thumbs up at the end. Uh, but yes, I've enjoyed doing it and what the f am I saying? I mean, it's quite a simple track. There's not a lot going on. You know, there's not loads and loads of uh, layers going on with it. There is. There's seven. Uh, but like, let me know, like, oh, don't leave that in the comments. Just give us a thumbs up and get on with your life and get on with your day. What a 